Kitco Mining's special coverage of Gold Forum Americas is brought to you by Metalla Royalty. Bringing the gold sector together. This is Paul Harris of Kitco Mining at the 2024 Gold Forum Americas in Colorado Springs. Joining me today to discuss this is Tim Wood, Executive Director of the Denver Gold Group. Tim, welcome to Kitco. Thank you, Paul, and very much a welcome to you and your crew here in Colorado Springs. A pleasure to be here as always, Tim. Now, you are the mastermind behind this event, and for me, you've always been one of the best connected and most knowledgeable people in the gold sector. You speak regularly with the, the Denver Gold Group members, which are the gold producers, uh, and of course, you speak regularly with the investment community. Here, we have interviewed eight of the 10 largest gold producers and many of the intermediates and developers, which I think is a testament to the strength, depth, and quality of this event. So, so congratulations there. Um, how would you characterize where we are in this gold market? Yeah, I think it's very clear that we're at some point of inflection. So we've lost 46 companies since 2019 to mergers and acquisitions. You know, typically in years prior, there would have been some sort of a spin co that would come out of a deal like Newmont and Newcrest. And we just haven't seen that for five years. So it's been very unusual, obviously impacted by COVID. So 2018 was our peak year, 176 members here and 1,400 attendees. This year, we're down to 144 companies showed up. We had two late cancellations and we'll have about 912 attendees on site. So the even though the gold price is so good, you know, if you told me in 2018 that we'd have a $2,600 gold price, I would have hired the Colorado State Patrol to keep us safe from the 10,000 people that were going to show up. But it's still a little quiet. I don't think we're at that belief stage. And we've heard quite a few keynote speakers saying it's very clear that we are nowhere near a even the onset of a euphoria stage. There's still a lot of skepticism. And there, today's keynote speaker, Wasif Latif, was just saying that we're, we're in a moment of skepticism about even commodities generally, not just gold. A lot of the people I've spoken with expect the gold price to continue its march higher. So it's quite possible that in the future you will have to hire the Marlha Stadium to host the event. Well, I don't know that we ever want to go back to Denver downtown at all. But, you know, we certainly have heard a lot of very positive comments. Again, Wasif Latif from Samaya Partners was talking about $4,000. Ronnie Stuferli, well known to all of us, $4,800 is his benchmark. And I think, you know, just we don't have to talk about the blue sky issues. You can just see from prior cycles how the reduction in interest rates, which appears to be the, the onsetting case in the United States now, does give a lift to metal prices as well as the underlying equities. And the companies here, especially the seniors, just had a blockbuster second quarter of results. And I think that's going to feed through and investors are going to have to go somewhere and those second quarter results were just so outstanding that I think we, we can now get past some of that skepticism about what happened in 2011 and that cycle. Well, it looks like um, that's only going to increase in the quarters to come because uh, fuel prices are starting come up, to come off. A lot of uh, companies' mining costs are related to the oil price and the gold price continues to go up. So margins are going to continue to expanding. So I think a lot of people are anticipating even bigger bonanza results in the coming quarters. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And it's not just the, the fuel and oil prices directly, but think about all the chemical reagents that are related to that oil price. So that could just give us a good couple of quarters of, as you say, just almost a booster level to the bottom line. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what the companies decide to do with that extra cash. Now, the, a key thing for a lot of people here in terms of the issuers is our investors coming back into gold stocks. A number of gold companies, their share prices have increased 50 to 100 percent year to date. Not everybody, but uh, there's some very big gains. And if these quarterly results continue, you can only expect those to increase further. Um, what, 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 will it, what will it take to get investors back into gold stocks? Will it be that slap round the face? Oh my God, look how, look how well these companies are doing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think you can recall if, if we go back to the, in a sense, the real peak was 2006 and how quickly things took off. There, there was a lot of skepticism. So even though 
April 2001, we bottomed in the gold price, um, you know, in the, the 250s. And then it started to creep up and nobody really believed it. And it was only from 2004 that things became turbocharged. And I think we'll see that lag. We're competing against Bitcoin, whether we like it or not, um, and all those other assets. The tech sector remains incredibly, uh, you know, dynamic and we haven't seen any particular come down there. So there's a lot of competition, but that also can't go on forever. There's a lot of hubris about the big seven. And I think there's some catalysts waiting to develop there that will be very gold and gold equity positive, as well as the other metals. I want to feed off that, if I may, Tim. Um, companies are investing an increasing amount in, in technology. You see that in the exploration sector, there's more AI being used to find new deposits. Companies are electrifying, automating their mines. Um, at some point in the future, would it be valid to stop talking about mining companies and start talking to them uh, as, as though they were technology companies? You know, I think it's a nice idea, but mining will always need people. And most of all, it's gonna need the sort of people who've got the skills to find projects. So one thing that is true in mining is we, the Pareto rule runs where we see 20% of the geologists finding 80% of the ore bodies. And that talks to their skill. And there's something about a geologist's ability to find a deposit that I don't think AI can ever match. So there's a role for that technology. It's going to replace some jobs. I don't know that it will necessarily always be more efficient or more cost effective for every company. Um, and there's a, certainly a hurdle rate to do this at scale, which is what the big companies can do. But for the smaller companies, the business is going to go on much as usual. Um, I'm a bit skeptical about uh, just how far AI can take us in any sector. Okay, with the um, cash generation looking like it's going to be increasing in the coming quarters, capital allocation is becoming a, a bigger part of the conversations. What's your feel for what investors want to see? Are they looking at this as, okay, we can increase our returns? Are they looking at this, okay, we can perhaps take the restraint off the companies and let them start investing in growth again? Yeah, I think all of the companies acknowledge that we are underexplored right now. So I would expect some of the surplus cash to start going back towards Greenfield's exploration. Obviously, one of the best ways to find answers is to buy them. So we are seeing a ton of business development meetings. This is actually the highest quantity of business development meetings that Gold Forum has had in years and years. And I think that's a testament to the majors are out there looking for projects that are investable and that are not going to give them trouble with their capital allocator base. The allocators are demanding a lot of discipline. They don't want to repeat of some of the excesses from 2011. And I think the, the industry understands that there's been a fairly significant turnover in management. And I get a very different sense from this crop, in a, if I can say it like that, of senior management compared with prior generations. What kind of M&A action do you anticipate coming? You know, the, the recent years, it's been some of the big ones. So obviously Newmont Newcrest is a, a big one, but Yamana being taken out is another one. I would not be surprised to see a combination of two of the, the really big majors. There, there's some clear synergies in certain camps that would make it obvious. And it, you do save on some of those overheads when it comes to shared uh, head offices, accounting services, and everything else that goes on. So I think there's a case to think that there's probably going to be a mega deal that would give us our, a $100 billion uh, gold mining company. But I think down the chain, it's probably the time for the juniors who can survive this. And it has been incredibly tough. Some guys are throwing in the towel. If they can get through this, I think there's money on the table for great projects to be brought forward. On the other hand, I do think that there are some weak projects which may be set aside because of that capital allocated discipline. They don't want old projects that have just been stumbling along for three decades and more. And I think those are probably not going to get the amount of uh, allocation that we've seen in prior cycles. As I was preparing for this event, Tim, um, I was looking at um, 
the corporate presentations of the, the bigger companies. And it's uh, evident that um, I think nine out of the 10 big companies have done a transaction in the past two or three years. There's one major, major standout. Is that the company that perhaps you think could trigger a big m and It would be somewhat of a conflict of interest for me to uh, even go there. But I think we can look at the top 10 by either market capitalization or production and reserves or some combination thereof. And it's very clear that there's an increasing overlap of assets. The industry has suffered a little bit of overcapitalization in certain districts. And it just makes sense to rationalize some of those assets. And I think there, there's good potential for a deal on the table that the, especially the specialist precious metal investors would support. Now, um, we're talking there about the, the, the top companies, but in the intermediate companies, that, uh, that class, if you like, has, has grown um, in recent years. It seems right for some consolidation there too. Exactly, and I think Australia's been leading the way there. You know, just tremendous success with some of those companies. Uh, I think there's some concern about single asset producers, and that's going to drive some consolidation. But Australia's just been very successful, uh, very investable. Um, there are a couple of concerns about regulatory issues out of the east, but certainly in Western Australia, those guys and gals are really delivering, and I think there's potential to see a whole lot more of what we've seen very recently. The sector seems to believe that high gold prices are going to stay high for into the foreseeable future, into the medium term. At what point do you think the sector will take a, a fresh look at how it values its reserves and resources in the ground? Most of the major companies still use 12, 13, even $1,400 per ounce. Um, are those prices now unrealistic given where we are and where we're going? You know, obviously this is driven by regulatory issues for the various mineral codes in the different countries. I think it handicaps the, the company severely because at any point they're usually undervalued or then suddenly significantly overvalued. And the tendency is that they don't get the value when they're lagging as we are now, but as soon as the price comes off, they get immediately punished. You know, I, I would hope that there would be some lobbying to try and address this situation to get us to something that's more reasonable. Um, what sort of a rolling average that would be, but I think there needs to be something that's a little closer to the actual engineering envelope for that mine, as well as the metal prices. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's an individual corporate decision and their level of risk tolerance and especially how confident they are about their all-in sustaining costs and whether they can keep a lid on those. Because they, obviously one of the most damaging issues is that when costs explode and catch up to the new pricing on those reserves. Okay, now one of the, the great benefits of being here at the event is the ability to meet other people, whether it's through formally organized meetings such as, such as this or just bumping into people in the, in the corridors. You took the decision to shrink the footprint of the event uh, physically, bringing everybody closer together and that seems to have been very successful in um, delivering those serendipitous meetings uh, in the corridor. I've seen a number of people myself. I've seen a lot of people getting their heads together. Um, that seems to have been a big success for you. Yeah, thank you. That's good feedback. Um, that's what we've been hearing. We obviously took a big risk. We've got a very big space and we had been inclined to make it comfortable for everyone. And the feedback we got is that they felt they'd lost that option for the spontaneous serendipitous networking. So we, we took a significant risk in consolidating the space that you see around you and bringing everything into one space, but it has been very successful. And, and you know, the energy of the event has been incredible and that's good to see. So we're gonna continue to fine tune this model that we've developed for this particular space. And you, if we get to a point where we get a $3,000 gold price, then we may open up some other areas that we used to be in. But for now, we are gonna tweak and fine tune the space and make it even better for next year. And okay, how do you think the rest of the year is gonna play out for Denver Gold Group members and, and the gold, gold price? Well, I'm not really in the forecasting business, but we certainly wish them every good wish that they, they just have an outstanding remainder of the year and going into the new year. Um, everything looks very auspicious in terms of higher metal prices 
uh, great company discipline. There's some fantastic assets out there that are being well managed and are improving. So I think there's a lot for all of us to look forward to. And it's going to be interesting to see how the generalist investors start to respond. And I think we're going to see that in the new year. And once the fourth quarter results come in as something of a proving ground. It does seem that the results are potentially going to be so good they cannot be ignored. Absolutely. I, I think those headlines are going to be pretty astounding. Where, and once those dividend increases come through, that's also going to change the story. Okay, well, we look forward to that. Thank you very much for allowing us to be here, Tim. Look forward to next year's event. Tim Wood, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Kitco, for being here. We look forward to seeing you again. Excellent. We have a lot more to come from the 2024 Gold Forum Americas in Colorado Springs, so hit that subscribe button to see all our videos. I'm Paul Harris, and this is Kitco Mining. Kitco Mining's special coverage of Gold Forum Americas is brought to you by Metalla Royalty.